cool. So we're here in Jack's FJ62, and I'm gonna give it a little bit. Ooh, that sounds nice. I want it. There we go. I LS3. Yeah, it's got the LS3 swap in here, so. It even says Corvette on it, I it think. It does, right? I didn't expect that when it showed Corvette up. Corvette engine in here. Yep. I mean, it sounds good, it feels tight, it has power, it's throaty. Ooh. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, I'm here with Jack Carr driving his restored FJ62 up to a little spot where we are gonna film a rig walk around. Yep. So, here it comes. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm here with my friend Jack Carr out in Park City, Utah. Actually, a beautiful spot right here with the aspens changing. Let me show you. Boom. Yeah, good time of year. So Jack Carr, if you don't know him, he's former Navy SEAL, actually served the country for 20 years, which is awesome. Thank you for that. And then, ever since he was a kid, wanted to write books after he served. So got out, started writing books, and now you may know him. He's a New York Times bestselling author, actually, for Terminalist, True Believer, and then his latest book, Savage Son, working on the fourth book, as well. Yep. So the book series has a lot of inspiration from Jack's own life. It's, yep. it's not based on Jack, it's a fictional series, but dude's a Navy, Navy SEAL, and loves land cruisers. So this baby's actually kind of a character in the book, and that's what we're gonna be talking about as well. But Jack, very cool, interesting dude. So if you don't know him, check him out. I'll put links to all his stuff down below. I actually read all three of your books, I listened to them on Audible, technically, <laughs> uh, but blasted through those in just a few weeks, man. I was hooked. Thank Can't you. wait till book four. So Jack actually has liked Land Cruises and Toyotas for a while, and my arm's getting kind of tired out here holding this up. So I'm gonna turn it around and I'm just gonna let Jack talk about why he likes Land Cruisers. Yeah, so I think it might have started, might have started with Kevin Costner in Revenge back in the day. He had this sweet FJ-40. It was an F-14 pilot in the beginning of that movie um, based on a, uh, a great novella uh, by Jim Harrison called Revenge as well. But uh, I, I loved them. And then we got over to Afghanistan and I saw the Hilux over there. And we were running those Hiluxes and they were taking a beating and we were bolting on armor. We were putting in the comm suites and all that stuff. Uh, now they come from some aftermarket factory type thing where the comp suites are in there, the armor's in there, the engines are all souped up, they're pretty sweet. But back then they were just normal Hiluxes and our mechanics bolted on all this extra stuff. But uh, saw what they could do in Afghanistan and then follow on years in, in Iraq and other places around the world. I just saw mostly these Hiluxes, but then you'd see an old Land Cruiser as well. And uh, I just fell in love with Land Cruisers. So uh, when I got, got back, I got one and this was uh, rusted, older, falling apart, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, Jack was kind of telling me the story. It wasn't always this beautiful, it wasn't always this pristine clean. baby. But yeah, what, yeah, what uh, happened to clean. it? So. And uh, then I got it, and we were living in Coronado, California. That was my last two platoons out there. And got an oil change. My wife's driving down the highway. She's pregnant at the time. And all of a sudden, the, uh, all the oil comes out and engine block cracks. So I tracked down another 6.2 from a junkyard that had an engine in it and had somebody rebuild it, drop it in, and it just was never quite the same. And then that one just got tired and died one day. And so when that thing died, I was like, all right, this is a sign. I'm just gonna hold on to this until I can do it right. So, so let's start is, there yeah. actually with, we got a new engine in here, yep. something pretty spicy. Should I pop Actually, the hood on this thing? Yeah, let's go ahead and let's pop that hood. Right. So I'll let Jack speak to it a little more, but this is a, this whole car was a frame off restoration. That's right. With an LS3 conversion. Yep. Even says Corvette on this baby in here. Look at that. So this is not your typical FJ62 at all so well, yeah what i tell like us. about it is that for people that don't know they just think it's an old land cruiser and for people that 
do know, they give one take and they're like, oh, Land Cruiser, but then they come back to it and they're like, wait a second, this looks a little too clean. There's something about this that is a little bit different. And that's what I wanted, because I like that. I kind of like the camouflage thing, kind of like the blend in, uh, just because of my, my background, I guess. Yeah, kind of the uh, gray man-ish of, of Land Cruisers that's going it. on here. That's it, so I brought it up to Jonathan Ward and the crew at Icon uh, TLC 4x4 um, up outside of LA and I put it in line. And so it was like a two year wait just to have them bring it into the showroom. So it was off, uh, it was on a, um, a little uh, RV storage facility nearby, uh, two year wait brought it in and then uh, they started working. And I asked them, hey, what's the, what's, what should I put in this? What engine, if it was yours, what would you put in this thing? That's kind of how I usually deal with, with experts, whether it's uh, it's bows or whatever else. I say, if you were doing this for you, in order to make it the best possible bow, best possible build, what would you put in here? Mm -hmm. And they said they had the best luck with this, uh, this LS3. Yeah. Uh, so let's fire it up. Oh yeah. I'll go back to the exhaust. That is throaty. Yeah, open the hood. Add the gas again. Crazy. I love it. I love it, man. Awesome. I may just drive it back to Colorado if you don't mind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Drop the LS3 in there. And so having actually here. driven it myself, I drove it up the hill here. It is, it's something else, man. It's, I've, I've always wanted to do an LS swap on one of my Land Cruisers and this has not helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that a lot when people people drive it. Um, but but the RB compressor in there, um, they did a. I mean, they did a lot. You can tell, and it's super clean. It is and, clean. Yeah. I mean, this thing is just. It is pristine. Yeah, not it's bad. It's like a brand new machine. Yeah, of course they need the headlights. Of course, we don't have that yellow plastic glow in the middle of the night as you're uh, as you're driving. So, um, yeah. so those are nice to have some modern modern headlights in on there. Put some horns, maybe some hellas in there. Yeah, I've got some horns in there. Uh, so it's and then not... your bumper is in better shape than mine's in. That's yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, those things could take a beating. Most of them, because I, I had it had a ding in it for years, and I was looking all over to try to find just a replacement, and I could never, never find one back in the day. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's on there now. You can look underneath. That's super clean. That's one of my favorite parts is uh, underneath here, just how clean that is with the old Amy, old Manny Mule and some Fox on there and everything. So they just do a fantastic job. Yeah. So it looks like you got maybe a maybe a two and a half or three inch lift on this yeah, with I think those. Yeah, two and a half. Yep. OMEs. That's it. Yep, two and a half on there. We can start this thing up here in a little bit and, and listen to it because it's, uh, yeah. it's a pretty sweet sound. We'll do it's that. nice when you pull up next to a Porsche at a light and, uh, and then just hammer it, which is kind of fun. <laughs> Especially if they're a car yeah. guy. They're like, what? Uh, these is... were the last. These, got, these are from uh, Australia, these wheels. Okay. And they were the last set they had. They couldn't find them at uh, TLC and then they found the last set in their warehouse. So it's an icon. Right. So they pulled these out and this is the last of their builds to ever get these. Yeah, these they are uh, good looking, really match the vehicle well. Yeah. Looks like we got 285, 75R16, KO2s, a personal favorite tire of mine. Yeah, I wanted to keep well. it looking, you know, fairly stock. We did kept these, uh, kept the side view mirrors the same. You know, there's some other options that you can, you can do with those, of mm -hmm. course. And then here's the inside. Yeah. A little, a little, uh, little vault there for the pistola. Yeah, this thing is just beautifully restored here. Got a little safe underneath. And we got the Tuffy center console here. Fire extinguisher. Yeah. And the 62s get automatic windows, man. Jealous yeah. of that with That's my nice. with my 60. Yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, so I wanted to keep this thing pretty clean. I wanted to keep it uh, looking fairly stock, but only have people that are real Land Cruiser aficionados be able to notice, give it the double take, and uh, stop and say hi, like that person just did as we were doing the tour here. But yeah, so actually, yeah. before we get inside, yeah. it's just 
What they do with these restorations is they take, they're called frame off restorations. Yep. So take the body off the frame, you know, re recoat or finish or replace every nut and bolt on this thing. So yep. they fix any imperfections with the body, give it, I mean, I'm guessing they repainted this, right? And oh, yeah. Is this factory color though? It's the, yeah, it's the original color. Uh, so I had the, had the option and I was going back and forth between that, that grayish metallic blue that they had that was also factory uh, stock color at the time, uh -huh. or this one, which was the original, and I decided to stick with the original. Yeah, kinda it's, like a, it, it's a great, it's a, it's a classic color, yeah. honestly, it's really good. So anyway, externally, this thing is flawless, perfect frame, perfect body, perfect lights, everything. Um, but they don't stop exterior wise. Oh. We actually, they here's this little more exterior stuff. So we hit a couple of things. You got the backup camera now that obviously did okay. not exist in yeah. 1988. That's nice. And got some backup lights on here. Oh yeah, kind of hidden, yep. stealthy. Exactly, exactly. Which is just what I just what I wanted. Yeah. So really, yeah, it would take a take a trained eye to see this and kind of know that it's something something yep. a little special. Exactly, exactly. We could have changed these out, but I wanted to keep the side view mirrors the same. Did switch these out, so these are the Icon. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, little, those are nice. Yeah, so that's kind of kind of cool. And yeah, so they redo the whole interior, redo the seats. I think they upped the, the bolstering a little bit. Oh yeah, these are the Icon seats in here. So you get to choose everything, all the, the leather that you want, everything that, all this stuff, the chill with right there. So they do a, they do a good job. Yeah. We're gonna keep the inside of the console looking fairly stock, but also wanted it to pair with Bluetooth and all that sort of thing as well. So, so yeah. it does. So we got a new, yeah. new unit in here. And wow, this thing is just, it is immaculate. Yeah, you did a good job. And then in the console, of course, in the center Let me swing console around. here. Man, the doors even just feel nice. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, one of the things I really love about it is that they did the sound dampening everywhere. So it's in the doors, it's up here, it's everywhere. So mm -hmm. that really makes a makes a difference. That was that was noticeable. Yeah, and driving it, it was I mean you hear the engine purr, but it's quite yeah. quiet in here. Yeah, a lot different than than before. Yeah, and the and funny then, thing yeah. is I just got a 60 recently, so I have kind of a direct comparison of yeah. like Sounds what you get kind yeah. of stock and then what you right. get with this and it is it's quite different. Yeah. So, yeah, they they did a, a toughy console right here. Of course, it wasn't uh, in the original. And then I keep the books in here just in case I get uh pulled over or something, I can toss one on the dash and just in case, just in case they're a fan, maybe it helps out, I this don't know. This is Jack's uh, get out of ticket know. free trick. That, you don't wanna say anything, you know what yeah. I mean? But if you just happen to have one like that, like, or maybe on the seats like this. Yeah, they're like, oh, I love those books. And yeah. then you say, oh, it's I like, am <laughs> the author. So I send a lot of them out to uh, to law enforcement and, uh, and that sort of thing, firefighters, send them the, the, all that. So that's uh, awesome. Who knows, maybe if I get pulled over, maybe it'll help, maybe not. But uh, but yeah, everything. He'll report back and let me know if it uh, <laughs> I'll let gets you know him if out of But yeah, the uh, interior wall very very nice. Is nothing too crazy, right? It looks looks similar to how you'd get one of these things off the lot, you know, yep. thirty years ago. But just yep. a little bit nicer He's with there, a yeah, few kind of modern amenities added. Some chargers down there. Yep. Headliner is in a little bit better shape than mine. Yeah, <laughs> the headliners are like the first things to go. <laughs> These things originally. From yeah. What, from what I understand, they start sagging and all that stuff, so. Cool, and Jack is a big gun and gear guy, obviously. Uh, talks a lot about gear in his books. So if you like Land Cruisers, you like gear, you like Revenge, Navy SEALs, then definitely check out his books. So I just had him grab some gear. It's not normally just, you know, strewn in the back here, but. I had him grab some of his favorite pieces of kit so we could we could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, totally. And then we also, they added some storage back in here in the tailgate. Yeah, at some point I'll put some, some foam in here or something like that and and, uh, and cut it out so it's all, something fits. Yeah. But right now it's just, uh, just Yeah, clean. big enough to, uh, we kind of, we kind of squeezed some guns in there, but we, we didn't want you guys to think that he's actually driving around like that necessarily, yeah. so. No, but these things and then on the side, they did a great job with these. I mean, just everything is, it's just crazy the work they do at Icon. That it's is awesome. beautiful. 
And I was a huge Jonathan Ward fan, of course, before he started working on this thing. And uh, he's just a just an artist, just a, a genius, and this is his medium. Yeah, John has a Jonathan has a YouTube channel as well that he kind of talks about some of these. Actually, he did an episode on this. Yep. So, if you want Jonathan talking about that, that video is out there as yep. well. Um, but yeah, we got some got a nice rubber mat back here. Got panels on both sides and then we got some some gear some of your favorite yeah. pieces of gear yeah, so we can go through through all this stuff we're gonna do a separate edc video with jack actually soon but while we're here we'll kind of do a mini one and cool. we'll just talk about some of the some of the pieces that you brought out yeah. for us so when we start we can do the stuff that's on me and this is kind of like extra this is like my if we're gonna do a normal everyday carry we can yeah. do that so yeah let's normal. save the uh, let's save the normal stuff for a separate dedicated okay. video cool. i think yeah cool. we'll do like a gear we'll do a gear video okay. we'll really get into it but what do we got over here what All are right. some of your favorite so things so this is uh, my dynamis blade right here that uh, is made by daniel winkler uh, but my friend Dom Rasso of Dynamis Alliance, he designed this thing. And uh, this is, I always have a fixed blade on me and sometimes it's this and sometimes it's the one that I have on me made by another SEAL buddy okay. by Attack Blades, which is the one that's on me right now. Yeah, which so, stay tuned for Stay tuned for that. more on that. So if I have the fixed blade, then I also have something for opening packages and everything else. So this one is uh, from New West Knife Works and I don't even think it's on their website yet. They gave it to me because I wanted something really thin. Oh yeah, it um, has a thin profile too. It's it. also, it's super nice and I really like these kind of blades that like, I mean, these ones are expensive, but overseas I'd carry ones that weren't so expensive because if I lost it, I wouldn't have a heart attack. Yeah. I have a lot of knives and a lot of them mean something to me. They're mm -hmm. given to me by somebody or I, I used it in a certain situation. It's just personal. And if I lose them, then that one's gone. Yeah. Forever. So, uh, but this thing's pretty sweet. So I know I can get a, another one. They put the little Jack Carr tomahawks on there for me. Ah, uh, look at that. Sweet. Yeah. That's uh, Jack Carr's logo, yeah, kind of. but love this thing. So this is pretty sweet. Just super thin and... Uh, this is throw open the packages and doing all that normal. Doing the stuff, stuff that most people use their knives for every day, huh? Yep, I love that. And I love this thing too. So this is like one of my favorite pieces of kit. Use it in the books, uh, made by Daniel Winkler. It's uh, designed by Dom Rasso because he was carrying a, uh, a screwdriver with him on ops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay. Just for prying things or st whatever. Yeah. So uh, so this thing's pretty, probably the most expensive screwdriver you can ever possibly carry but also the coolest looking but it's pretty sweet yeah. <laughs> so Winkler eyes right there dynamis alliance right there and if you read the novels um, uh, you'll know that this is used in in there so very cool that is that and then of course if you're a fan of the novels uh, you know that this one right here is uh near and dear to my heart so this one yeah james is, reese uh, gets down and dirty with this in the novels yep so this is uh made by winkler it's a it's a collaborative uh, design between daniel winkler um and a, a sayak master so this is the one that uh, james reese goes to work with in the book so yeah. got that just mean uh, front spike not too many spoiler alerts here yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's that one i love that thing uh now this is pretty sweet um aster knives i like this one because it's small yeah and this thing is a pretty sweet like you can uh, he told me it was a everyday carry and i was kind of like ah okay and yeah. then i carried it uh -huh. and it is legit like you carry it on your belt and i use a different belt uh the one that i'll talk about in a second but you carry it like this okay and it is almost uh more comfortable than the pistol Okay. Uh, if you carry it right there in four o'clock or, you know, three thirty or whatever. Um, um, I'd like but, to see a cell phone video of some guy taking out a bad guy with one of those on yeah, the streets. This thing's like small enough that you can actually carry it, but you have to give it a shot um, uh, before. Like, you have to try it. It's just me explaining it. Doesn't mm -hmm. do it justice because it is actually yeah. comfortable to carry. But imagine, yeah, pulling this thing out or on somebody like. Oh. I wouldn't want it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get hit by that thing. They'd be like, wow, that person's legit. He's carrying an axe. Yeah. And then uh, right here. So this is, I'm working with uh, uh, with this thing. So this is uh, Black Point Tactical and Kyle Lamb designed this thing. So I'm not, I haven't really been an appendix carry guy. Okay. But in my next novel, I have James Reese carrying appendix. Okay. And I have him carrying this right here, the, uh, the X carry. So just so everybody knows. It's, it's cleared. Yeah, so there's the X carry with their uh, their red dot Romeo One Pro there, and that's what uh, James Reese has on the cover of The Devil's Hand, right. and that uh, that he's using in the novel. So I figured if my protagonist was carrying it, then I'm gonna have to use learn how to shoot a red dot pistol. So I hadn't really done 
too much of that in the SEAL teams or uh, it's game changing now. So it's uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. So I'm going out to Thunder Ranch this next week to put it through the paces again. Going to meet Taryn Butler out there. Um, so I've been doing a lot of work with this carrying appendix, uh, both this, the uh, 365 XL, the 365 all on appendix, just kind of to get used to it. So when I describe it in the novel, uh, it comes from personal experience and not just how I think someone would feel drawing or carrying from appendix in the different situations that my protagonist is in. So good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack has a lot of experience obviously with stuff in his novels and for the stuff that he didn't have firsthand experience you actually you take trips you yep. dive in you learn and that way you can write a more kind of yeah. full rich experience into yeah, it to, so to mozambique to do some research out there for the second novel and then also went down to uh, south africa and helped train up an anti-pooch unit that was switching over to uh to glocks and m4s and so i have a little bit of experience with those so um spent some time down there with them learning about tracking and their backgrounds and and how they deal with the poaching issue in, in South Africa in particular. Good so stuff. Those, and if I'm carrying something bigger than what I have on me now, which is my the 365 and a different blade and some other things, uh, then I, I, I switch the belt up a little bit to something that's a little little more stiff. Um, so I think this is the Aries, I think. Um, but uh, this belt's pretty sweet for everyday carry. It's not super thick, not not too crazy, but it's just about right for me. So in all the testing that I've done over the years with, uh, with different belts, if I need to have something that's a little thicker than the Dynamis belt that I have on now, then I use this one right here. Cool. Um, and Good a couple stuff. more things, but we have some cars coming up, so we might, might wait a second. Cool, so I grabbed this, uh, uh, this Era 3 AR. Uh, like this thing, super light. I have a light up there some backup irons and a little aim point red dot nice. on there, the micro T2. Um, so this is kind of my uh, my go-to with the Viking Tactics sling. Kyle Lamb's a dear friend of mine, and I started using these in the SEAL teams around 2006 maybe, 2007, somewhere somewhere in there. Okay. But uh, this is a kind of a more more modern version of the one that I used in the SEAL teams. So, um, so through the, the Viking Tactics on there. Good stuff. And, uh, Ooh, we got one of the smooth P mags on there boom. even. Look at the, Oh yeah. So yeah, I think it has a carbon barrel, like just just pretty light, go to just the just the basics, nothing too nothing too fancy, but uh, can still go to work and, and get the job done with this bad boy. So good stuff. Uh, oh yeah, that surefire light up front. Yeah, so you got a surefire scout up there. Yeah, and then as an author, so I have my backpack with me most most all the time, uh, because I have my laptop in here when I'm working on, on my novel, wherever I go. Um, but some things that are in here. It's, uh, so I always have a tourniquet, of course, and yeah. have those strewn throughout my other uh, daily drivers. Um, always have a have a, a headlamp, and this one I like. They don't make this one anymore, so unfortunately, so whenever I find them, I buy them. Yeah, but uh, just like it's super simple. You don't have to cycle through a bunch of different things. You don't have to program it. Yeah. You just throw in some batteries, and if you need it to be blue, you do that, uh, or red, depending on what you what you have. So I always have my headlamp on me. And as an author, I always have a notebook, of course. Just got this, Sig just sent me this one. So that's pretty sweet, that's brand new. So thank you, Sig. So how much of writing are you just jotting down little notes and details that you want to get in a future book? Does that happen all the time? It does, Yeah, it does. And then I have, of course, I have like, this is new. That means there are ones that are old. And okay. I want to go back to one from like three notebooks ago or, uh, 15 yellow sticky things ago. So I haven't really gotten organized the way I should uh, as an author, but but I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah I'm getting there. Cool. Uh, I'd like to eventually transfer them all onto my computer and then save them or email them to myself or something like that just so I don't, don't lose them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always have a copy of the novel in case I run into somebody in an airport or something like that that's, uh, that recognize me or you know, yeah. whatever. So I can hand them, uh, hand them a novel this is the first one. The terminal list so uh, basically like a very big business card for, for jack that he that's carries it. around so if uh, if you see me odd and i have my backpack on me uh or i'm in the land cruiser uh odds are i will have a book there and All right. uh, i'd love to sign you it heard it here you. if you yep. uh, bump into him and want a free that's autographed it. book and i even see look at these i used to carry guns and knives and stuff everywhere but now these are my weapon of choice right here. Yeah, right here. The, the sharpies. Sharpie. So I have plenty of sharpies. Sharpie is a staple of my EDC as well. <laughs> nice. Honestly. Nice. So what else do we have here? So I like these. So these will be in uh, uh, all of the vehicles, uh, my wife's vehicle, my vehicle, in the house. Um, just small compact kit from Dark Angel Medical. Cool, um, yeah. A little and, IFAC. Yeah. Dark Angel and, makes great stuff. Yeah, I got the tourniquet in there, of course. And then um, I added one, an EpiPin 
Um, nice. Or, or uh, yeah, just, just in case. It's always good to always good to have. So, bam. So that's in my backpack in the vehicles um, in the house. So we have those scattered around. And then if I'm going someplace uh, with this, and I'm not on an airplane, obviously, um, and just in case, you know, it's not uh, bad to have something a little more serious. Yeah, look at that. The handgun. So this is a Rattler. Uh, this is 300 blackout. Got a little uh, red dot on there. Has some backup irons. Um, but this guy is uh, really compact, ready to go. One of my one of my favorite little pieces of kit from the last few years. So, yeah, very uh, cool little six inch barrel, 300 blackout. Yeah. I believe they've even developed some ammunition specific to the Rattler that kind of gets a more full burn in that short barrel but oh nice nice they may have so very cool yeah so that's that's that one uh and bam i think that's most nice. uh, most of this anyway. yeah it's not the stuff that i have on me so like every day i'm not you know gearing up and going out like i'm going into ramadi in 2005 2006 um but this is the, these are the extras over here the stuff that i have on me right now is typically the stuff that i will have on me good stuff day. yeah so we'll do an edc video coming up but yeah this was just kind of stuff since this this uh land cruiser is kind of a character in jack series i was like you know why don't you grab a couple other pieces that kind of show up in in your books and we'll just throw them into the video for fun so yeah, yeah the other part kinda... of that being a character like as being a child of the 80s every tv show back then used to have a some sort of a vehicle where like so airwolf had the had the uh, helicopter you had the the duke's hazard you had knight rider you had magnum's ferrari you had crockett's ferrari you had the a-team van you had all these different things that were kind of characters and so i think that kind of naturally bled over into my novels where i use different vehicles to develop those characters so mm -hmm. my protagonist james reese who happens to be a former navy seal sniper with a background similar to mine well he happens to like the land cruiser the sj62 and some other characters in there like the defender 110 and other vehicles uh that help develop their their characters as different and distinct from uh, james reese yeah it's very cool and so in the novels tiny little spoiler james originally has uh kind of an older beater his friends right. even kind of make fun of the Land Cruiser he's driving around, but eventually he gets upgraded to something a little bit more like this. And the Land Cruiser will be a kind of a recurring theme in the books, in the upcoming books. And also, I forget if we talked it about it earlier, yeah. but I think this is like, this is public news, yep, right? It is. Yeah, so Chris Pratt is gonna be James Reese in the series is it going to be called the terminal list yep, or called okay. the terminal list and so, right now it's an eight episode series for amazon i think we're supposed to start maybe filming this spring and then come out at some point in 2022 2022 but, uh yeah chris is getting all geared up so he can use all this stuff so he's working out doing his jujitsu he's going to be learning some blade work working with the pistol working with the rifle doing all those things that he needs to do to bring this character to life and there's just uh there's nobody better to do it he's that's just awesome. Kind of awesome yeah I, I don't know chris but i love what I know about him. Uh, so that is coming up. So great time to read the books, get ahead of the TV, TV series. I guess it's called a TV series yeah. if it's on Prime. Get ahead of the series, but that'll be coming out in, yeah, so 2022 maybe. And the Land Cruiser, well, I don't know if this one specifically will be in the show. It might be, but we'll see. A we'll see. Land Cruiser will be in the show yeah. as well as I think probably there's gonna be Defender in there and yeah, we maybe cool I'll find out where they're filming and I'll drive my 80 like through Come the background out. or something. That's it, no, I'll let you know. Not, but yeah, so that is Jack Carr's beautifully restored FJ62 Land Cruiser. This thing is a dream one day. One day, if I really hit it big on YouTube, then maybe I'll be driving one too. That's it, so subscribe. <laughs> so get subscribed That's down it. below. But anyways, Jack Carr again, I'll, I'll leave all his info down below. And we're gonna do another video, an EDC video. And actually, if we have time to squeeze it in, I'm out here just for a day, but he has a buddy that has a really cool Defender 110. It also that happens to be a character in the third is novel, another the Savage, character. Savage Son, yeah. Yeah, so we're probably gonna do a walk around of that as well, so stay tuned. Get subscribed, notification icon, whatever. Comment down below if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them, but definitely, Appreciate your uh, Dude, time thank out you so here. so much for coming out. Yeah, here I'll do left-handed handshake. Boom, Bam. thanks. All right, take care.